Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, this video series is about the top must-have apps for a degoogled phone. Today we're going to be taking a look at another app from the F-Droid store and the F-Droid store is great because it promotes open source projects. It gives you warnings if apps promote closed source services or non-free services, but it also offers some degree of virus protection because People will report viruses, and I'm sure that they have some kind of virus protection on their end. Today, we're kind of revisiting something that got me started on YouTube a little over a year ago, and that is related to KeePass. If you're not aware, KeePass is an open source password manager, similar to what you would find with LastPass or OnePass, except it's entirely open source, and you can host your own databases on the cloud using Nextcloud, using Dropbox, or anything like that. And in this case, we're going to go into the mobile app for that. And my personal favorite mobile app, because I prefer to do most things on desktop, is KeePass Droid. A couple years ago, I did a video for Android, and that was for KeePass to Android. But one of the issues that I had with KeePass to Android was, I was using this phone at the time, and it's totally cracked and messed up. When I wanted to use the biometric functionality that exists in KeePass 2 Droid, it would spark memory leaks. And I'm sure that that has been fixed, but basically the phone would eventually crash after about 36 hours. So I had to reboot my phone every day. That's not the biggest deal. I do like to restart my devices anyway, because generally they operate cleaner when you do restart them somewhat regularly. But it got kind of intense having to restart my phone all the time. I just always had to keep it in mind. And when I switched to dGoogle Android and I went into the F-Droid store, I found KeePass Droid instead of KeePass 2 Android. And I, I actually like the app a lot more because it's, it's really trimmed down. It's a no-nonsense password manager that can read your KeePass 2 or KeePass version 2 databases. So let's just go into to F-Droid right now, and we will download KeePass Droid. And you can see that the image hasn't downloaded yet. That's how you can tell that this is a fresh install, is the F-Droid store will take a little bit of time to download all of the images for all of the apps. You probably noticed that if you're a subscriber in the last couple of videos. Most of the apps are now downloaded on this phone, though. So now if you go to most of the places oh there we go it's a nice purple icon we'll go ahead and open that we'll just go back over to the f-droid store really quick and show you that the f-droid store should look nice and pretty it should look kind of like that on the landing page or if you want to go to categories it should be really colorful just like you would expect an app store to be now that we have the key pass database open, what you can do here is if you mirror a KeePass 2 file to your local device, say with, I'd recommend Nextcloud, but even if you wanted to use something like Dropbox, you can add a folder to your device that mirrors and syncs with the cloud. That's how we connect these with KeePass Droid is it requires a local file. It doesn't connect directly to the cloud like KeePass 2 Android does. But when you have an, a file mirrored to the cloud, it actually works out really well because you're constantly syncing. You don't have to deliberately sync like you would with KeePass 2 Droid. In this case, because we're not going to be syncing to my next cloud account, I'm just going to show you how to create a database and then that way we can kind of skip over the connecting and syncing a folder to your local device stuff. Most of you who are watching this channel should be technical enough to be able to handle that kind of thing. The only permissions it's asking for is allow KeePass Droid to access your photos, media, and files on your device. I'm going to click allow and then we'll set a password and I'm just going to say password1 password1. Cool. The key file line right here, we're going to leave blank because we're creating a new database. 
and it looks good. We are in the database now. We've created the password and that file exists on our local device. And we'll be able to set that as our primary in just a moment. As with most of my videos, let's just start with the settings so we can take a look here. Like I said before, this is no nonsense. So we go into settings here. All there is is application settings. There are very few options in here because this is a very simple app. In this case, we're going to enable biometric login. It's pretty handy. It allows you to log in really quick, especially if you have a really long password. Really long passwords are great on a keyboard. They're not so great on a touch screen. We can set different items here. Clipboard timeout, five minutes is too long. We're gonna do 30 seconds for application timeout. Five minutes to lock your database is pretty good. If you are using biometrics, keep in mind, courts could in some jurisdictions order you to provide your fingerprint to unlock your device, but not necessarily your password. So just something to keep in mind that you may not want to use biometrics or if you have something to hide and you think someone's coming in, you may want to turn off your device because there will be no more biometrics at that point. You'll have to input your password. The rest of this stuff is pretty basic. Masking passwords. I don't want to show my passwords. Group list size. This is default to large, which is great. I have a lot of entries in different folders. And sometimes I even have subfolders, which by the way, keypass droid can read and key encryption rounds before corruption. That's just apparently there was a version change that caused some corruption of databases that this app can actually reverse. Really simple settings, really handy stuff. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a group. You could just add an entry into the root directory, but I'm just gonna show you how groups work. We'll say email. So if you had personal emails, for your own server or if you have Gmail and ProtonMail and all kinds of different stuff, then that would be the stuff you would throw into the email folder. Once we navigate into the folder, we just select it and we can add an entry. For the entry, we can say e Gmail main username name at gmail.com URL gmail.com and then this is the password area. The, this app will generate passwords for you. It defaults to six, eight, 12, and 16. Those are pretty weak with upper, lower, and digits, but you can add minus signs, underscores, special characters. Some apps won't take brackets or spaces, but you're not actually stuck with 16 characters. If you want an extra secure password, you can go ahead and type in 64 here generate a new password, and you've got your ultra secure mega password that is stronger than AES, to AES 128 encryption. So that is an option here. We can go ahead and accept, and then that password is created. You can add comments for notes, old passwords in case some applications in my experience have reverted my passwords before. Every once in a while you'll find one of those in the comments, but generally not because those situations are incredibly few and far between. Now we can go ahead and save the entry and we can see Gmail main. If we navigate back up to email and we want to search, we can go into the search area, which is right up here at the top. It's the little eyeglass. If we go ahead and search Gmail, we can search this really quick and it will pull up Gmail the search works very, very similar to what you would expect with the KeyPass default sys application or KeyPass DX, is, which is what I personally use. That was also endorsed by Mental Outlaw if you're looking for someone who's even deeper down the rabbit hole than I am. Let's go ahead back and then I'm going to click the lock icon to lock the database. Let's close the app completely. And then we're going to reopen it. That's really weird. It's not prompting for biometrics. Oh, I know why, because I haven't actually added my biometrics to this phone yet. Hold on just a moment. I'm going to add my biometrics to this phone and then I will restart the video. Okay, now we're back in business and I can show you how the biometrics work. So now we can save the password with our biometrics. And I'm going to show the password for 
this case just because we're on video and I want to make sure I get it right on the first try. Cool, password one went in. We can press enter. Now we can save our biometrics with our password. Now when we lock it and we exit the application, if we go back into KeyPass Droid again, it immediately prompts us for our, our biometrics. We can go ahead and input our fingerprint and it automatically logs us in and we can go about our business. This is an incredibly lightweight app. I love that it's in the F-Droid store because it's independent of Google App Services, completely disconnected from that. A really cool app. I love it. It's no nonsense. It's perfect because for me because I vastly prefer a keyboard to a touchscreen device. If you have any questions about this application, if you have any comments about what mobile password manager you like, please also leave those in the comments down below. Thank you for stopping by. This is Nick signing out.